Please welcome the chair of the County Board of Legislators, Ken Jenkins. Good morning, Mr. Chairman. Good morning, Bob, and good morning, Westchester. Well, spent some fun time uh, at your place of business yesterday with the county executive, then with the head of the union. Wow, that was an explosive meeting. Uh, and then with uh, some of your deputies uh, down in the conference room. Uh, one of the things you were, I got a quote of yours this morning. I'll read it back to you if you, if you don't mind, sir. Uh, and it did come up during the county executive's presentation of the budget. And for those of you just turning in, it's a budget that calls for no increases but may very well uh, lay off 129 people. And uh, you went on to say yesterday the two major concerns about the budget uh, amortized $35 million of next year's $91 million employee pension bill and bonding $13 million of court-ordered certs, certiaries. Uh, that came as a surprise because that's something the governor said, uh, excuse me, the county executive said he'd likely never do. A, what was your reaction to the budget? B, uh, did they really give the union a fair shot? We spoke with Ms. Bacure yesterday. She said they have not bargained in good faith. Uh, what's your reaction to all of this? Well, well, well first, um, that, that the uh, budget overall um, is a starting point for the Board of Legislators. So it's got the county executive's priorities. Um, the Board of Legislators are going to certainly analyze and review that and make adjustments. Both sides of the aisle, um, the leader Mezzano and certainly leader Harkham on both sides are very concerned about borrowing. Um, it's about $43 million altogether of borrowing, um, $48 million of borrowing altogether um, for operating expenses, something that Westchester County has never done as far as tax certiorities and has gotten places like Nassau County with a control board with $100 million of bonding that they've done and gotten themselves in deep trouble with that. So uh, we're unlikely to do that. Uh, we've adjusted that uh, from the very first proposal that, that happened, with, which was last year, to borrow money for tax tertiaries. As far as the, the, um, the amount of layoffs, we're concerned about the ability to deliver services. So you need people to deliver those services, and we have a certain level of expectation that the commissioners tell us they're going to be able to do, and we will analyze that and find out. As far as the negotiations are concerned, the Board of Legislators does not get involved in negotiations with any of the unions, um, but, but certainly the characterization that I saw in the PowerPoint presentation um, that was done by the county executive was, um, was misleading at best. Let's say that the people contribute um, to their health care contributions at the rate of their salary, which is about average 75000 weighted salary for those CSEA employees that would include their benefit package. That means they pay 15% of uh, their, their health care contribution if they did the plan that the Board of Legislators approved and adopted in the county executive side um, two years ago. That's $1 million, $1.2 million of savings. So, you know, when we have a $97 million projected gap to suggest, well, if these guys just did this, um, that would help us out. Well, yeah, it would help you out, but, you know, we would not be in, a, we'd still be in a position of being very, very short based on their projections, which haven't been right for the last two, <laughs> two years. So we got to question those two. Now, uh, we heard from, I don't know if we, if we got back to you, but Kathy Pecora, the head of the union, she mentioned that uh, the very EMS people who went out to help during the storm, they would get laid off, or five of them would. But this is what you had to say. If you, let me know if you can't hear we this. We have made proposals. Believe me. We had, originally when we started negotiations, 58 proposals we had in, in our current contract, additions or changes. We, we narrowed it down to 10, and they won't, and they won't even discuss the 10. You know, it's it's. Only always the, the contributions and I'm telling you we have never once refused to to contribute never once does that resonate with you again I know you're not involved in negotiations but uh, when we pressed Ms. Bacora she said we can come up with them with the dollar figure it's not necessary all in contributions so that was a little vague but in general she was accusing the the county executives team of not meeting uh, with them uh, saying that the open door policy isn't quite open door do you have a response to that well I can't say how their negotiations are but I can say how the co-equal branch of government negotiations are, um, it's either their way or not at all. So uh, I can see that there's consistency in that particular part of the argument and that ultra-conservatism approach, or that ultra-conservative approach where there's no bending, there's no modification, there's no room to do something and come up with a compromise. That's just the philosophical view uh, of the county executive and his true belief in that. And, again, you know, we can't blame him for holding a particular position because that's his position. 
But when you're trying to negotiate with anyone, you have to have flexibility. And unfortunately, um, that seems to be inconsistent for this particular administration. That's why we have four or five lawsuits right now going with four temporary restraining orders preventing them from doing things. So, um, 742. I, I, gotta, I, gotta, I mean, I can't get involved, and I don't understand, um, you know, because we're not engaged in those day-to-day I conversations see. and negotiations. But, um, again, from my experience as the chairman of the Board of Legislators with the county executive and the folks like that, that seems consistent to suggest that um, it's either their way or not at all. Okay, and that's just not how work, it should be working in politics. That's not what the people want. And that's not what we should have. Let's take a look, Ken Jenkins, chair of the County Board of Legislators. We're talking about a $98 million gap, and, and there's some serious borrowing to help close it. Without the borrowing, uh, are there, does the, the, do the members of the legislature see other areas to cut so that the, bound, the borrowing, let's say for certiaries, uh, can be avoided? Well, you know, something there's two combinations. You either raise revenue through taxes, as we see at the federal government, or you reduce services. There's no middle ground, right? <laughs> There's okay. no other magic to make it happen. It's a very simple math formula. You either add more or you subtract. The Board of Legislators doubled the tax relief that the administration proposed in the first year to minus two. That's how we got that and preserved $20 million worth of programs. The second year, we had a zero tax levy, and we still were able to invest and preserve many of the programs. And while there were still layoffs in both of those years, they were drastically reduced from what the county executive proposed. We're going to take this budget, analyze it, see where the math adds up, and it doesn't add up, and we'll move forward from there. But I will tell you it's a complete non-starter for borrowing for tax certiorities. Um, the, the question is whether you go to your savings account, that's your fund balance, or you go out and you borrow on a credit card. Um, most uh, sane people would say, hey, if you have the cash to pay for something, you pay for it instead of borrowing it and giving someone more interest rates and still talking to those financial agencies to deal with the, the issues of the day, whether or not, you know, to make sure we're maintaining our credit rating. Um, well, so all is, those things are important, and we will continue to do that. We're going to listen to the people. I, I wanna, I, I've got a minute left. I'm sorry to cut you short there. I just want to give you a chance to make any announcements you feel are necessary, sir. Uh, no, I, I hope that everyone is going to participate and watch the live streaming of the commissioners as they come in, as they've done since I implemented that two years ago. Um, making sure that they're going to be able to see and hear from the commissioners, come out and participate at one of the three public hearings, the Marinette, Cortland, or finally in, in White Plains in the county center, and make sure their voice is heard. Okay, County uh, Chairman of the uh, County Board of Legislators, Ken Jenkins, thank you very much. All right, Bob, have a great have day. Have a great day.